right now at six. If you think housing prices are bad now, just wait. Could we get two million by the end of the year or really probably by next spring? Maybe. With a seven figure median price range in our future, affordable housing is more important than ever. I couldn't be more excited to see the finish line we've come to. We have a 360 in-depth look at the options available to you and when we might see the market cool down. Plus, Broncos star wide receiver Jerry Judy is arrested. I can tell you guys specifically that there was no physical contact between Mr. Judy and the female party in this investigation. What led up to his arrest and what it means for the Broncos moving forward. We begin with breaking news at 6 o'clock. Fire danger remains high across the Front Range, and we have seen several fires near Colorado Springs. One has forced a shelter-in-place order at the Colorado Springs Airport. And that fire is in the area of Powers and Milton probably Boulevard, uh, just south of the Colorado Springs Airport. Inbound flights are being stopped right now, and people are being told to just stay inside. The airport says they are prepared if they do need to order an evacuation. In Teller County, a fire causing mandatory evacuations off Highway 11. We are working to get more information on this one. Now, all evacuation orders have been lifted for this fire in northeast Colorado Springs. These pictures are from the Colorado Springs fire. Show just how close this got to being really, really bad. Look at that. It got right up to the fence line of the homes in northeast Colorado Springs. A fire crew say 25 acres burned. 500 houses evacuated. And we do have a crew in the Colorado Springs area right now getting the latest on these fires. We will bring you that coverage tonight on Denver 7 News at 10. And we thank you for joining us tonight at 6. I'm Ann Trujillo. I'm Shannon Ogden. Well, the ceiling keeps rising and it doesn't look to stop anytime soon. No, tonight we are taking a 360 in-depth look at the housing market across the metro. The April report from the Colorado Association of Realtors says the median price of a home in the metro reached $660,000 last month. And that figure could hit seven figures in a year. More on that in just a moment. We're going to be in our in-depth reporting with a look at solutions. Affordable housing. It's hard to come by. A new option open today. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn joins us live. And Russell, a new complex opened on the Loretto Heights campus. Yeah, and this campus sits on the National Register of Historic Places. This is the most iconic building on campus. It dates back to the 1800s. The one that opened today dates back to 1929, and it is now being offered as affordable housing in a city with a major affordability crisis. It's a common theme in Metro Denver, making what's old new again. Two, three. Exposed bricks, high vaulted ceilings, industrial piping, and yet new modern amenities and living space. I couldn't be more excited to see the finish line we've come to. But while the redevelopment of Loretto Heights and the opening of Pancratia Hall is being applauded by some. The whole area is going to get crowded. Neighbors are still guarded about what's to come. We're concerned about, um, you know, chain stores moving in and changing the neighborhood if it were unique mom and pa stores that could be fun. Lonnie Kramer lives nearby and says this redevelopment must be thoughtful. And we're also concerned about how densely populated it will be, how close the buildings will be and if there'll be enough park space and trees in between. And she's not alone. Vern Bell supports affordable housing, but also worries about his own property value. The mixed feelings. Um, I'm not sure if the people uh, really listen to everybody. A lot of people said no low income housing or not a lot of low income housing. Okay. And he's concerned about businesses surviving here. If they come in, even if they're mom and pop sh shops, I want, them, I want to see them stay. For now, city leaders like Councilman Kevin Flynn and others are celebrating the rebirth of an iconic place. This place has so much meaning for all of us. Perhaps what gives this place so much meaning is that it sits on a hill here in southwest Denver with sweeping panoramic views of the city. You see downtown and then also the Rocky Mountains. This dirt behind me will soon give way to townhomes, single family homes and commercial businesses on this 70 acre urban infill project. We're live in southwest Denver tonight. Russell Haythorn. Denver 7. All right, Russell, thank you for that. And on Monday, the city of Denver approved rezoning requests for the Barnum, Barnum West and Villa Park neighborhood to allow for accessory dwelling units, ADUs. Now, these would be smaller units homeowners can build in their backyard and then rent out. ADUs are important because they can provide another affordable housing option here. 
Now, so far, the Chafee Park, East Colfax, and Sloan Lake neighborhoods already have ADU rezoning laws. And here's why those affordable options are so necessary. The future of a single family home is headed towards a median price of a million dollars. And the question now isn't if, but when. Denver 7's Jason Grenauer is in our newsroom breaking it down. If things stay the way they are right now, the median price for a single family home in Denver will hit a million dollars within a year from right now. It's a nice round number for a seller, um, but for a buyer, that's an affordability issue. It, it can be a concern. That's Carla Farley from the Greater San Diego Association of Realtors. Just this month, San Diego hit a million bucks for its median home price for a detached home. It is about 16% more expensive to live in San Diego, according to salary.com, but they've also been seeing a lot of the same issues that Denver's real estate market has since COVID. Low supply, high demand, bidding wars, and more. Are we talking about this, or has this been a long time coming in, in getting to there? How did, how did you get to that million dollars? So I'm glad you did this because that 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 kind of really explains it. It's a, this right now. The median price of a single family home here in Denver is just under six hundred eighty five thousand dollars. So still a ways to go to top a million, but on the way. Could we get to a million by the end of the year or really probably by next spring? Maybe that's where my head goes. Nicole Ruth works with the Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and studies the trends in market data. She says median cost is growing a few percent a month. If the latest pace continues, we would cross that million dollar median price next April. But there is a silver lining. Our appreciation is slowing. Thank goodness, right? We don't need this kind of extreme. More houses on the market and higher interest rates could slow the growth enough to fend off that million dollar number, possibly into later next year. We are 100% going to get there and we're 100% going to get there because the Denver market continues to appreciate, even if we slow way down. The news isn't much better for renters. A new report from Stessa shows the median rent in Denver increased 9.3% since 2019. In the newsroom, I'm Jason Grenauer. Denver 7. And listen, we want to hear your stories. We want to hear about your experiences with this housing market. You can send your thoughts to 360 at the denverchannel.com. Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy has been arrested in Arapahoe County. Judy was the Broncos first round draft pick in 2020. The sheriff's office says he's charged with second degree criminal tampering with a domestic violence enhancer. According to state statute, that means a person allegedly tampers with the property of another with the intent to cause injury, inconvenience, or annoyance. The domestic violence enhancer would potentially increase the penalty if Judy is charged and convicted. Arapo County Sheriff Tyler Brown says there was no act of physical violence here. And Judy makes his first court appearance in the morning. Broncos say they're aware of the arrest and are working to gather more information. News of that arrest came just hours before the Broncos schedule was released. The schedule we just got it into our newsroom. The Broncos have five night games. Those games include a Monday night game at Seattle on September 12th. That will be the return of Russell Wilson to Seattle. And the game, we're very excited about this. The game will be right here on Denver 7. Then two weeks later, the Broncos host Sunday night football against the 49ers. That's September 25th. The Colts come to Empower Field a mile high for Thursday night football on October 6th. And then it's another Monday night game in L.A. against the Chargers on October 17th. And the final night game of the season, it's a big one, December 11th against Kansas City. And that one is right here in Denver. It is still too early to tell the impact Judy's arrest could have on the team. And sports anchor Lionel Bienvenu will break it all down for us in about 15 minutes. New tonight, the Adams County Sheriff's Department has confirmed the daughter of a deputy was killed in a shooting Sunday. We brought you this story yesterday at 5. This three-year-old girl was shot inside the home in Frederick and died at the hospital. Police have not said if the shooting was accidental. The Adams County Sheriff's Department says their department is deeply saddened. Cherry Creek State Park reopens to boating tomorrow after a five-day search for a missing tuber. Parks and Wildlife say they've exhausted efforts to find the 29-year-old man's body. Uh, they say they will continue to investigate any possible reports and to try to bring his family some closure. High school students across the metro walked out of class today in support of abortion rights. This was part of a national student walkout to protest the Supreme Court's draft opinion that was released. Some Lakewood High School students we talked to say some may think they're too young to have an opinion, but they say they are focused on their future. 
it's all about us being able to shape the future and not having our parents and the Supreme Court and everybody else dictate what we can do with our lives and how it's going to affect everybody else after us. Now today we also spoke to the director of the Respect Life Office for Catholic Charities. They help counsel young mothers who decide against abortion and they say they help by telling women how abortions are done to help them make an informed decision. Governor Polis has directed the State Department of Agriculture and the state veterinarian to work with the Bureau of Land Management to evaluate those wild horse deaths at the BLM Canyon City facility. Since April 23rd, 142 horses now have died from an equine flu outbreak. Governor Polis hopes state officials and federal officials can work together to prevent this from happening in the future. Fire weather warnings continue. I'll let you know if there's any rain coming our way. Road rage leads to a carjacking on the front range. He had just got out of the car and um, he got, somebody took their gun and whacked him. Tonight, what we're learning about the victim. Plus, using art to help highlight a local organization's mission. Being part of a community and doing my part as an artist is, is really important. 